Hi there, welcome to this video. So here are some things I realized regarding Echo and Jinx fight on the bridge, that will definitely give some answers and inspiration to the time bomb fandom. I have discovered that Echo actually did turn back time to save Jinx from the explosion, and that he wasn't just remembering their gunfighting games when they were children. He was actually really rewinding time, probably again and again, until he got the moves right to beat Jinx, and also, to be able to save her from the explosion. I know that Arcane script writer said in one of her answers on Twitter, that Echo was reminding their past games, to be able to beat her like that, but maybe did she say it intentionally, so that we wouldn't wonder too much about it, but perhaps she really didn't write it in the script, and Fortich decided to animate it like that anyway, since Riot might have influenced the script regarding Echo since time is his ability and they wanted to add some things to the show. I will show you that with evidence I've found in that scene, and that are too significant to be ignored. First, even the fight itself shows that Echo is rewinding time, and not just remembering their childhood games. Perhaps did he feel like playing at first, and he must have felt once again like a child who kept losing face to powder, but intertwined with those childhood memories, we can clearly see parts, with a grown-up Echo actually making those moves. The paint on the floor, isn't paint anymore and becomes blood, in which he steps into. We can see him avoiding real-time bullets, not paintballs from their childhood's game. At one part, we see the space between them, and it moves to the rhythm of the music, showing Powder's paintball turn into Jinx's bullet, and the floor is the bridge's floor with the enforcer's dead bodies around them. Also, we can see that, while the child versions of themselves are having fun in Echo's memory, they also show us an adult version of Echo whose look is way more serious, way more angry, because the adult him isn't playing anymore, and is dead serious. Unlike Jinx who is just having fun, because she is reminding of their little childhood game. But Echo knows this isn't a game, and is really putting his life into it. We can see him dodging her attacks, his hair are his hair from present day, long dreadlocks with a hair clip in it, and he's avoiding real-time bullets. The fight is really taking place. We can see the watch is ticking throughout the sequence, because he has activated in the beginning of the childhood remembering scene, which means the scene is actually taking place, and isn't the scene we see when they actually fight, since we see him activated again in the beginning of that serious fight, just after we saw him get hit by the paintball, which made him rewind the scene again. At first I thought all that scene was rewinded for the watcher, of course, but I think it was not, and if you ask me how did he rewind time without his zero tech device, well, I think that might just have a link with the gemstone. But you'll have to watch my other analysis about the gemstones in the arcane, to understand fully what I mean. We'll just skip it for now, but I will talk about why Echo might have done that later in the video don't worry. Anyway, back to the scene. When Echo gets hit in his memory by the paintball, we can see he actually rewinds time. The child version of him is frustrated of losing, and throws the time watch on the floor, but it then goes back to a hand, and it is actually to the grown-up Echo's hand. Because we can see next, that it goes back to the child Echo's hand, when the previous hand we saw, had already grabbed a hold of the watch. After that, the second before we see real grown-up Echo activate the time machine again, we can see the child version of himself being ready to fight, but this time with a smile. Because he knows he got it right. Now. And the noise the time machine makes indicates it too. It's a new start. And what I realized, was that there was actually a noise just like that, a second before Jinx's bomb exploded too. But I'll come back to it later. This is actually Echo's particularity. We know this since Echo was introduced to League of Legends. He rewinds time, again and again, until he gets the moves right, and this is why he was able to know exactly what Jinx was going to do, and how to get to her. Because this time watch that we see, is actually an early prototype of his zero tech drive. He can't turn back time as much as with the zero tech drive, but he can probably still rewind a few seconds, or a few minutes. We can see that Echo's already been working on his zero tech device, since he's got it in Arcane, and stores the gemstone in it. I think he might just have been curious about that gemstone, when the firelights got a hold of it, because he realized his zero tech drive could finally work with this magic stone, so he wondered what it was, and where it came from. Oh yeah? Then what's this? You got it. You have to let me take that back. What is it? It's a gemstone. It was stolen during the attack. By your sister. Any hex tech device. If enforcers are becoming more aggressive, that's why. That said, here comes the end of the fight. 
we can see throughout the fight that Echo has his time machine in his hand, and just like Jinx whose hand is closed at first, and that could have make us think she's holding the gemstone, we then see it's free, and she's defending herself with both her hands, so it just won't make sense that she'd be holding onto the gemstone so tightly in her left hand when Silco found her. First, I realized Echo did rewind time to save her. And more than that, he's actually the one who gave her back the gemstone, and that realization added more facts to another analysis I've been working on regarding the arcane and the gemstones. If you ask me why would Echo have done such a thing, then I'd tell you it's because he wasn't interested in that gemstone in the first place, and what he really wanted to take back from her and get to safety was his zero tech device, which he managed to throw towards Vi. As he recognized Powder later, he rewinded time to save her and perhaps gave her back the gemstone, since he knew it was what she was here for. Perhaps he thought when she'd wake up, she would understand it was his way of apologizing to her or making her understand he saved her life. Because actually, she wasn't the one holding the gemstone during the fight, so it makes no sense she'll have it in her hand when Silco found her. I have something else that makes me think Echo's the one to have given it back to her, but it will expose too much of my other gemstone analysis, so I'll just talk about it in my other video, try to have a look at it, if you want to know more. Anyway back to the interesting parts. First, I was intrigued by that noise, that could be heard just a second before Jinx's bomb exploded. So I've been digging into it, and found where it came from. It is the noise space-time, or whatever, Echo's watch itself probably, makes when Echo's time watch is rewind, and we can hear it too in the childhood fight, when we see he has failed, and then rewinds time to get it right. Listen carefully, in original version, slowed down version, and speed up version. You will hear that noise just a second before the explosion. Now, honestly, I didn't think about sharing this discovery these last few months, because I thought a lot of people might not agree with me, but last week I have discovered something even more interesting regarding Jinx, and how she was found by Silco, and most importantly, about Echo's watch and how it works. Anyway see for yourself. When Jinx and Echo were fighting, their positions were parallel to the bridge, we can clearly see how their bodies are positioned, but when Silco found Jinx on the bridge, her body was in a whole other position, like she had been moved from her original position. I still thought the bomb that exploded could have make her move, but if it did, regarding the fact she lunged the bomb with her right hand, then the blow would have make her body move to the other side, and most interesting thing, it's that her position, and especially her hair, are not the same as when we saw her at the end of episode 7, after she exploded the bomb. Her hair are in a whole other state position when Silco found her. The end of the episode clearly shows us that Echo's watch is ticking through a new minute, which shouldn't be, since he was already through a whole turn of the watch when he reached Jinx and brought her to the ground. And if you compare the way the watch shows the end of a full turn in the first sequence in which we see Firelight Echo, the camera clearly shows us that it turns red when it's close to the end of the time Echo has set on the watch. And shows he doesn't have much time left until the set time is over. I'm pretty sure it is something they did on purpose. They intended to show us that when Echo's time on his machine comes to an end, Echo's watch turns red to indicate he hasn't much time left, but at the end of the bridge fight and after the bomb exploded, they intentionally showed Echo's watch again, which had stopped at the beginning of a new turn, as if it was lunged again, but had to stop because it got hit by the explosion. So regarding the way it's been ticking like it's broken and looking at Echo's first apparition sequence, we can analyze the clock and understand how it works. First, the lunch button is on the side, not on the chain side nor the red mark side. Also, the clock ticks are positioned on the opposite of the chain, always put on the fourth minute block. Regarding this, and what Echo said in his first apparition sequence, we, have five minutes till they're out of there. we understand one block is one full minute. And as it approaches the end of the minutes he has set the clock onto, a block becomes red in one second. So, we understand that on that bridge fight, Echo added whether, 2 seconds to be able to get him, or Jinx away. Or had a full 3 minutes and 2 to 3 seconds to do so. Seeing how his device starts turning red near the end of 5 minutes. So, around 3 minutes and 57 seconds. And seeing how the clock strikes are stopped broken between 2 and 3 seconds after the bomb exploded. Let me explain. Let's go back to the scene, where we first see Firelight Echo. We can see when Echo holds the watch, and it is near the 5 minutes. That the previous 3 blocks from the starting strike, are red. 
like the ones being passed by at that moment, and which are turning red with every second. Which means those previous three red blocks started turning red the minute before the minute that is ongoing at that moment, which is the one approaching the fifth minute. We understand that the ongoing minute in that moment of the scene is the fourth one. But since the blocks are turning red seconds by seconds, and the strikes are on the right, indicating it's a new minute, it means the blocks on the left have turned red the minute before this one. Which leaves us seeing how this is the fourth minute, and seeing how one block takes one second to turn red, with three minutes and 57 seconds before the white blocks start turning red. They start going red indicating Echo is soon on his last minute before the end of the time. They start going red, indicating Echo is soon on his last minute before the end of the time, so before the fourth minute. The whole fourth minute gets the rest of the block red, while the three previous blocks have started going red at exactly 3 minutes and 57 seconds, indicating he is soon approaching his last minute of time. On the clock we see on the bridge, the blocks are not red. So it means Echo rewind time, and launched his clock, yes, but saved himself and Jinx in a matter of time before it reached 3 minutes and 57 seconds. So he had, whether 2 seconds to help Jinx, or 1 minutes 2 seconds, or 2 minutes 2 seconds, or 3 minutes and 2 seconds, seeing how the clock strike is ticking on the right, between 2nd right block and 3rd right block, are not red, and not on the left. Whatever time he had, he still used it, and saved her life from the deadly explosion, and it's probably those seconds he lost staring into her eyes, when he recognized powder in her, that he took back, to be able to save her. Whatever happened when he rewind time, he managed to save her, and was the reason for her to be able to survive the explosion, and I hope we somehow get that answer in season 2, when they meet again somehow. See you soon guys, I'll soon come up with more analysis, and discoveries I made these last few weeks. Please feel free to subscribe or let me know what you think in the comments, 